Hi, it's Mr. Baumgart. I'm back with one final video on our Java GUI series. Uh, I wanted to have a quick talk about code design and refactor our project a little bit um, to make it, uh, I think, hopefully easier for beginner programmers to follow. One thing that slightly concerns me using this method of programming the uh, action events within Java is the fact that we're putting code for functions inside functions where we are overriding uh, a function in an, an anonymous class which is all buried inside our constructor. And so we've got uh, our outer class here in the screen and then we've got our constructor function and then within that we are running a function which is declaring a, an anonymous class and inside that we are then uh, overriding the abstract function action performed. I think it's easier to follow if the constructor can be, uh, we, if we can continue just thinking of the constructor as setting everything up, which it is what we are doing, but if we logically separate the various concerns and put all of our action happening code into functions that are part of our outer class, uh, in this case, screen, which is extending the JFrame. So what I'm actually going to do is um, actually first just to further illustrate. So like if I closed the, uh, minimize the con constructor, then I, I want to be able to see my normal behavioral functions all happening here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of uh, three extra functions here for the three different action events that happen within our program. So public void, and we have our button uh, for a new contact and it gets clicked and can receive an uh, action event. And then we're gonna create our button saved click and it also receives an action event um, although we're not actually using any of the uh, event uh, classes in this little project but uh, you get the idea and then we've got our uh, people list which what did we call that again oh yeah no list of people there we go uh, list people select uh, yes, yeah, so the selection event, and that was a list selection event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the actionable code out of the constructor and put it into these three methods, and hopefully that kind of makes it, will make it a little more straightforward for people to, for, especially for beginner programming students. So this code here is for the new button. So I'm going to cut all of this out of here and come down here to where my button new click event code is. I'm going to paste that in there. And then inside here, for the action performed, all I'm going to do is put in a reference to that function I've just created in the outer class. So button uh, this is new, but a new click, and I'm going to just pass that action event as a parameter to it. So now this is kind of more like we're just defining, uh, you know, the settings for the new button. So we're saying for the button new, I'm going to add this event listener, and yeah, we're creating an, this anonymous class, and we're overriding this function, and we're just going to handball it straight to this function which belongs in our regular class that we are kind of used to um, knowing how this operates. And so we're going to do the same thing with these other ones. Let's take these, take this uh, save 
button code out of here. All right, so we're just refactoring our project just a little bit. And then do the same with our list code. Take the selection out of there. Put it in here. Uh, and so this one, when the value is changed, we just need to run the people list. Uh, what was it called? Uh, list people selection and pass the event to that one, even though, again, we're not using them. And let's do the same with the button saved. Whoops. Where's my cursor? There it is. Button save click. Uh, what have I done here? Button save click. Ah, I've got saved. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Right. So I would suggest as a general rule, when you're doing the, uh, when you're creating these uh, action event listeners, so all the rest of this is, uh, except for this one line, all the rest is, of this is what uh, IntelliJ is automatically making for you. Uh, and I would suggest getting in the habit of just put, ma making, only putting one line of code in these things where you are immediately referring them off to a regular method that you have defined in your outer class. And so then it kind of returns back to how you would have been taught that your constructor is just is there for initializing everything. And so here we're initializing this. We're saying when the button is clicked, I want you to run this function. When this button is clicked, I want you to run this function. When this list is selection, I want you to run this function. And then we actually go off and define the functions properly elsewhere. I think it's probably just slightly cleaner and easier to follow. And so now I can minimize my constructor. I know that that's all set up. And here's my three functions with the actual functionality to do what I want it to do. And if I run this code, we'll see that it will still behave exactly as we are expecting it to behave. And just wait for it to pop up. Okay, here's our project. And if I click on an item, it's populating the list. And if I make a change, save the existing, we can see that it's changing everything and behaving exactly as I expect. And I can create several copies of Howard. <laughs> All right, so uh, I hope that helps. I hope it makes the code slightly easier to follow. Um, yeah, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.